Welcome to week six of administrative law. Let's go to the fridge and see what we took away last time. Under Chevron, unless a court has held that a statute unambiguously requires a certain interpretation, the agency remains free to adopt any reasonable alternative. Under Chevron, an agency may choose any reasonable interpretation of a statutory ambiguity even if a court believes there is a better one, unless it is so good that it removes the ambiguity. And if it's that good, the court should say so at step one. An agency's choice of a reasonable interpretation may leave open a further question whether the choice was arbitrarily or capriciously made. An agency interpretation is not owed Chevron deference unless the agency exercised a congressionally delegated power to interpret authoritatively. An agency interpretation that is not owed Chevron deference is normally owed Skidmore deference. Normally, an agency interpretation that is made by notice and comment rulemaking or by formal adjudication will merit Chevron deference. Normally, an agency letter ruling will not. An interpretation that is decided at Chevron step one binds the agency whether the agency was upheld or not. An interpretation that is decided under Skidmore might be binding on the agency whether or not the agency was upheld or not. An interpretation that is decided at Chevron Step 2 allows the agency the flexibility to adopt a different interpretation, if reasonable. Agencies that interpret statutes that apply across or are administered by more than one agency may not be entitled to Chevron deference. The Attorney General does not get Chevron deference in interpreting the Controlled Substances Act because of the role Congress gave to the Department of Health and Human Services. Similarly, the Internal Revenue Service does not get Chevron deference in interpreting the ACA, the Affordable Care Act. NEPA, the National Environmental Policy Act, and of course the APA itself, apply across agencies. Now let's turn to the question of judicial review of an agency's interpretation of one of its own regulations, rather than agency interpretation of a statute. The issue is presented in the Decker case. The APA administers the Clean Water Act, which directs the EPA to restrict discharges of wastewater associated with industrial activity into the navigable waters of the United States. The agency promulgated a regulation under its statutory authority. The regulation interpreted the statutory term associated with industrial activity as meaning directly related to an industrial plant. Is this an industrial plant? If it is, then its operator has to take steps to prevent runoff from logging roads, from discharging into navigable waters. Obviously, a logging company seeking only to maximize profits will not want to internalize these costs. The agency action challenged here was the EPA's decision not to count the logging operation as an industrial plant. Bear in mind, there's a difference between an agency interpreting the statute it administers and an agency interpreting the regulations it promulgates itself under the statute it administers. The issue in Decker is whether the agency correctly interpreted its own regulations. As an exercise, you might work through the question how the EPA regulation itself would fare under Chevron. But the court in Decker applies what it calls Seminole Rock, or our deference, rather than Chevron or Skidmore.
regulation if the meaning of the words is in doubt. The ultimate criterion is the administrative interpretation, which becomes of controlling weight unless it is plainly erroneous or inconsistent with the regulation. Verbally, the standard seems at least as deferential as Chevron Step 2, especially if the court takes the agency's word for it that there is an ambiguity. The rationale for Chevron deference is that an ambiguity in the statute the agency is interpreting is read by the court as signaling that Congress intended the agency to have flexibility interpreting that very statute. That rationale seems inapplicable in the case of an ambiguity the agency creates in its own regulations. What is the rationale for Seminole Rock deference? The Hour Opinion says this by way of rationalizing Seminole Rock. A rule requiring the Secretary to construe his own regulations narrowly would make little sense. He is free to write the regulations as broadly as he wishes, subject only to the limits imposed in the statute. Hmm. This reminds me of Lewis Carroll's Humpty Dumpty. As we will see, the APA requires agencies to use notice and comment procedures when they amend or rescind their so-called legislative rules. But our seems to say that agencies needn't bother with that. They can simply make vague rules and then interpret them like Humpty Dumpty however they like. When I use a word, Humpty Dumpty said in a rather scornful tone, it means just what I choose it to mean, neither more nor less. The question is, said Alice, whether you can make words mean so many different things. The question is, said Humpty Dumpty, which is to be master? That is all. Has the court stepped through the looking glass? Taken together, the regulation's references leave open the rational interpretation that the regulation extends only to traditional industrial buildings such as factories and associated sites, as well as other relatively fixed facilities. It is well established that an agency's interpretation need not be the only possible reading of a regulation, or even the best one, to prevail. But is our deference more deferential even than Chevron Step 2? Consider this. A nutrition statute uses the term normal adult weight. Would it be permissible for the agency to interpret this to mean 250 pounds? Would this interpretation survive at Chevron Step 2? Probably not. More likely, the interpretation will be found unreasonable. But now suppose an agency regulation introduces the term normal adult weight. The agency is not interpreting anything specific in the statute. Would it be plainly erroneous for the agency to interpret this to mean 250 pounds? I suspect the answer here would be unlikely. The court would defer under our, even though it would not under Chevron Step 2, if the language interpreted was in the statute. Does this mean anything goes under our? Could, for example, the agency say, well, by normal adult weight, we meant 400 pounds? I don't think so. There are limits even under our. But what basis is there for giving their agency so much room? Justice Scalia, in dissent, thought our in Seminole Rock cannot be justified in terms of Congress's presumed intent. There is surely no congressional implication that the agency can resolve ambiguities in its own regulations, for that would violate a fundamental principle of separation of powers that the power to write a law and the power to interpret it cannot rest in the same hands. He cites Montesquieu. 
When the legislative and executive powers are united in the same person, there can be no liberty. Lest the same monarch or senate should enact tyrannical laws to execute them in a tyrannical manner. The Decker Court does note with emphasis that the agency wasn't changing its interpretation, but the court does not say that the agency could not. Can the EPA later decide by reinterpreting its regulation that loggers do need to get permits? Chevron, Fox Broadcasting, and Brand X allow that where statutory ambiguities allow that where statutory ambiguity is concerned. But in the Our Seminole Rock case, not so fast. In the case of Christopher v. Smith Klein Beecham, which is not in your case book, the court wrote. This court has explicitly held that when an agency's interpretation defeats reliance interests, imposing significant damages on the private sector, our deference is inapplicable. To defer to the agency's interpretation in this circumstance would seriously undermine the principle that agencies should provide regulated parties fair warning of the conduct a regulation prohibits or requires. Indeed, it would result in precisely the kind of unfair surprise against which our cases have long warned. After Fox Broadcasting, agencies have to consider reliance interests when they change interpretations, but they still get Chevron treatment. But in contrast, agencies get no hour deference at all when they change their interpretations of their own regulations in a way that upsets private reliance interests. This doctrine seems to favor deregulatory reinterpretations and to disfavor an agency's tightening its interpretation of its own regulations. Even so, our Seminole Rock deference, along with Chevron, is likely to be up for re-examination. As Chief Justice Roberts wrote in his Decker concurrence, the issue is a basic one going to the heart of administrative law. Questions of Seminole Rock and our deference arise as a matter of course on a regular basis. The bar is now aware that there is some interest in reconsidering those cases. In other words, our haters bring it on! <laughs>